Well, good morning and welcome to virtual worship with First Baptist Church of Martinsville on this final Sunday of the Christian year, Christ the King Sunday or Reign of Christ Sunday. Each year on the Sunday before the season of Advent begins, we take a moment to remember how Christ's kingdom has come and is coming on earth. So next week we will start a new Christian year all over again as we celebrate the seasons of Advent and Christmas. I encourage you who are watching our live stream to get to know one, each, one another in the comments. Uh, we can create some virtual community there today. Say hello to one another. Let us know where you are joining from. You can find a copy of our church bulletin on our website. You can go to fbcmartinsville.com and click on worship and services and today's date. Or if you're on Facebook Live, you can get a copy. Uh, you'll find it linked in the comments on a service on Facebook. Don't forget that you can continue to give generously to the ministries here at First Baptist Church. We now have an option online at fbcmartinsville.com slash give or you can mail in your donations or drop them off at the church during business hours. We are grateful for your continued generosity in these days because even though our buildings may be closed, uh, we are open for worship and for service uh, in new and innovative ways. I have a couple of announcements today. First off, I wanna welcome back our Minister of Music, Becky Collins. We have missed you. We are grateful for your leadership and grateful you are feeling better. Also, if you are looking for ways to serve your neighbors in these odd days, we have some opportunities right now. The first is that we are training folks to drive our bus to the warming center. That is who the area that is gonna take care of those who are without a place to stay when it gets cold at night. Uh, that is opened again this year at Forest Hills Presbyterian Church. Our bus will be taking our guests uh, from their pickup point over to the warming center and back. And if you would like to join with that, uh, we'll be training for that this Tuesday at four. We will need to add you to our church insurance, so make sure you let us know ahead of time. Also, you can train with the center to do other kinds of work. You can go and check people in uh, at the warming center. You can stay overnight. You can do laundry for the guest. You can make dinner for the guest. So if you are interested in any of this good work, please call the church office or email the church office and let us know so that we can get you in touch with the right people. Also, uh, with the season of Advent and Christmas just around the corner, starting next week, our church staff has tried to find ways we can celebrate meaningfully, even though we are at home this year. So this year, since we're not gathering in person on Advent Sundays and Christmas Eve and Epiphany, we have created Advent kits. And these kits are just bags of materials that will help you celebrate the seasons at home. Those will be available for pickup starting tomorrow, Monday the 23rd, uh, through Wednesday the 25th. And then of course, if you can't come those days or need one delivered, just let us know. Inside of this kit are a, an Advent guide. It's a brochure that tells you some ways you can celebrate at home. There's an Advent wreath starter kit. Just add your own greenery or get some here from the church. Christmas Eve candles to share in our Christmas Eve service virtually, and some more things. If you have children, there'll be color pages and more. So please let the church office know, uh, preferably by tomorrow morning if you can, if you would like one reserved, that will help us make sure uh, what we mail out with the brochures and what we put in kits, we, we do that carefully. So just email Mary or the info accounts or give us a call tomorrow morning and we will make sure one is reserved for you. But don't worry if you forget to reserve one, there are extras available. Also, the Women on Mission and Missions Committee are sponsoring our church-wide missions offering for December. And that will be to provide clean water for a community in a developing nation. We partner with Heifer International because they are one of the most highly rated nonprofits in the world. And we partner with them because their mission coincides with Jesus's to end hunger and poverty. The organization is too. 
They support and invest alongside farmers and local communities around the world. So we are grateful for any gift you might be able to give to that this season. We have a goal of $300, which will provide one community with clean water. But if we get any above that goal, what Heifer does is offer us other opportunities, depending upon how much we've raised, um, that will go to other projects, things like clean water, or perhaps providing a flock of chickens, or a goat, or a cow. Um, there's many things we can offer to a community that will do wonders for them. And last but certainly not least, those of you who are church members, don't forget that after worship today, we have our monthly business meeting. This will be our last one for the year. So a very important meeting at 1230 on GoToMeeting. We need you to do the good planning and work of the church. You can find copies of the minutes from the last meeting in your email from this morning or in your e-news from Thursday. And there's also an agenda of what we'll talk about today. We have good work going on despite all the strangeness of this world and the fears and the concerns that happen throughout the day. And I am grateful that God is still among us and at work no matter what is going on in the rest of the world. And I am grateful for all of you and all that you contribute to this good work. Now church family, may we prepare our hearts for worship.
We do lift high the cross today, in fact, because we know that this is the kind of king we serve. I ask you now to join me from wherever you are and let us read responsively our call to worship. You can find your part in the bold print in the bulletin after I read the regular print. We come for God gathers us here that with that community called faith. Where the hungry are served first, where the thirsty drinks life's water. We come for God welcomes us here into that home called grace. Where the naked are clothed in robes of hope, where the stranger is embraced as the long lost prodigal. We come for God reunites us here, sisters and brothers in that family called love. Where the imprisoned model justice, where the sick are cradled in God's peace. Will you pray with me? O oh Christ, our reigning King, may we honor your name, not simply by paying it lip service, but by trusting the vision it speaks of and the way it calls for us to live. May we honor it by following you, speaking into the world with our actions and showing who we've chosen to follow. May we love in your name. May we speak in your name, care in your name. May that willingness to touch the outcast, feed the hungry, remember the sick, visit the imprisoned, clothe the naked and give water to the thirsty in your name be how we participate in your kingdom this day and forever. And now we pray as our king taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, our Father who, art who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would please look in your worship folder, the church is one foundation, and if you are able to stand, I ask you to.
Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16, and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I the Lord have spoken. The word of the Lord. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all of the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it. To me. And then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, 
Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Play while they come up. Huh? And play while they come up. <laughs> I'll be okay. Come on, kiddos. Hello. Yeah, what's that? You gonna hold it for me? Thank you. You wanna come up here, Adeline? It's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we've, we've got two little ones with us today from our staff children here. We're grateful that you at home can worship with us with your children as well. It is virtual children's worship today. We miss your presence with us, but we hope that while you're at home, you'll get to sing and dance and listen to the stories today. Miss Becky is here today with her ukulele. And she's going to play us some music. And I'm going to attempt to help her. So <laughs> here we go. Are you all ready? You can stand up. Do, Let's stand up. do we know the song in Jesus Grew? Do you remember that one? You'll come up here. Okay. You, All right. Because Miss Becky's not able to get down and do everything today, okay? So. All right. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. In wisdom. In wisdom. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. In stature. In stature. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. In favor. In favor. With God. With God. And men. And men. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. In wisdom. In wisdom. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. In stature. In stature. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. In favor. In favor. With God. With I think I think my robe is getting in the way. <laughs> okay. And and then I know you know this one. Okay. I know you know this one. And I ex I expect yeah. it's our E I E I O song. E I E I O. Jesus Jesus is the Lord and King. E I E I O. And he taught us how to sing. E-I-E-I-O With a fa -la here and a fa -la there Here a fa, there a la, everywhere a fa -la. Jesus is the Lord and King E-I-E-I-O How about he taught us to pray? You ready? Ready? Jesus taught us how to pray E-I-E-I-O And he listens every day E-I-E-I-O with an amen here and an amen there here and a there and men everywhere and amen jesus taught us how to pray e -I -E -I -O. very good i'm so proud of you yeah you might want to listen to pastor libby okay all right well elena you've already helped me a little bit yeah, we're going to set it right here so everybody can see it. All right? Yeah. All right. So today, we're going to talk about shepherds. Do you know what a shepherd is? Can you say shepherd? Shepherd. Shepherd. Yeah. A shepherd is somebody who takes care of sheep. That's a sheep. What does a sheep say? Bye. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so shepherds take care of sheep because... Sheep don't know everything they need to know, 
right? Now, you and I, we don't see real sheep very often, do we? We just see these stuffed sheep like this one. But these sheep, they can't take care of themselves. They can't find water or food without some help. And did you know, see this picture? That's a shepherd, that's a sheep. You see him? Yeah? I don't know if y'all can see it way up there, but there's a shepherd and some sheep. And they take care of the sheep. Well, Jesus is also a shepherd. Did you know that? Jesus is a king and a shepherd all at the same time. Did you know that? You wanna hold that up for everybody to see? Yeah? So Jesus takes care of us just like a shepherd takes care of a sheep. So we can remember that Jesus loves us and is going to take care of us just like a shepherd takes care of a sheep. Can you say shepherd? Shepherd. And sheep? Good job. Shepherd and sheep. Good job. All right. So let's talk to God and let's thank God that Jesus has come down to take care of us like a shepherd. And he's, he's the king of everything, but he takes care of us like a shepherd. That's shepherd and sheep. All right, let's put our hands together and talk to God. Ready? Dear Jesus, thank you for taking care of us just like the shepherds care for sheep. Amen. 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 <laughs> Good job. All right, you wanna take, your, you wanna take the sheep with you today? You want to take it with you? Here, you can take a picture of the shepherd too. Here you go. Oh, man. All right. So y'all remember, Jesus is our shepherd. Here you go. All right. Here we go, girls. song and it's called forever and and you'll probably think of it as give thanks to the lord because that's what most people call it uh and i don't know if baxter's gonna play with me or not but uh bear with me because i'm still trying to see and sing at the same time okay <laughs>
Well, in fact, this week is Thanksgiving, and for many things we give thanks this week. But, of course, what do we focus on the entirety of the Christian year? And that is our gratitude to God for all God has done for us, whether the ancient Israelites or in the person of Jesus Christ. And today we talk about Christ as king, and not just any kind of king, but a shepherd king. And it got me thinking about kings in general. There are right now quite a few historical dramas on TV about monarchies. I think some of you may be watching these. Some of them are even exploring the lives of our current royals in the UK. And for some reason, we traitors to the king here in the United States like to reminisce about kings and queens and courts for some reason. I mean, we rebelled against these very kinds of leadership almost 250 years ago, but it's like the further the past moves from us, we like to glorify what once was. And I guess with all that fairy tales have taught us, it's, it's no wonder we think we ought to revere the kingdoms of the past. They, they come with beautiful Disney princess castles, right? <laughs> but if you really think about it, Having to marry up like Cinderella, the literal only way of changing one social position, that's a pretty lousy society to live in, especially as a woman. And so in our democratic world, as short-lived of a history as it may be in the scheme of things, we don't truly want to return to kings and queens. But it all seems so stately to watch on television. <laughs> I'm a student of history myself, though, and so I want nothing to do with autocratic rule. I don't want any one person to be the one with absolute power because I know how humans are. We fall into selfishness and greed so easily. We forget that leading others should be something done for the people, not for ourselves. And so spreading out power like we do in a democracy which by the way, Baptist Church is also a democracy, <laughs> letting the people govern themselves, it's, it's very important to the stability of a society, to the equality of a society. It protects those who normally would be pushed to the margins, gives them a voice they would never have had under absolute authority. So I'll be honest, when I come to Christ the King Sunday, I'm always a little bit troubled. I mean, it troubles me as a democratically oriented 21st century person, right? But of course, scripture is filled to the brim with absolute rulers because, well, ancient society was, right? And so it comforts me that in passages like the one from Ezekiel that was read today, it freely admits that Human ruling authorities in ancient times fell from grace all the time. And it was noticed by God and spoken through the prophets. Some of these rulers were the exact opposite of what God wanted to lead the people. And knowing that reminds me just how important it is that we are critically examining any leader we have against some really important characteristics of God. Throughout scripture, the story of God's interactions with humanity has many different depictions of how God leads us, but one of the most prominent is this image of a shepherd. This is partially because in ancient times, that actually was a really common image for describing a king. Uh, I was reading that Hammurabi was also described that way. But here in Ezekiel, we get some of Scripture's most straightforward depictions of what it means for God to shepherd us as human beings. God was saying here through the prophet that true leadership was lacking among the other sheep, among the humans, right? There were these bully sheep, these fat ones who pushed out the lean ones. 
And God says, I'm going to come and gather in the scattered flocks. And I'm going to lead them to abundance. We see those same images in Psalm 23 that we hear so often. But in this passage, we also hear that there's a reckoning for those sheep who harmed other sheep. And our Matthew passage also talks about sheep, but it talks about sheep and goats. It alludes to Christ coming in glory like a shepherd, separating the sheep from the goats. Now, most of this metaphor, as I was telling the children, kind of escapes us because this is the only sheep we ever see. <laughs> but what's, what's really important to understand about sheep and goats, anyway, is that sheep were very valuable. A lot could come of one sheep, whereas goats were much less valuable. And so goats were put aside and sheep were cared for very carefully. And of course, I... I always want to be careful when we're talking about God as shepherd or Jesus as shepherd because we don't want to take the metaphor so far, right? God, God made us humans a little lower than God, so, so we aren't just dumb sheep following blindly. So I always want to say this metaphor stops somewhere, as all metaphors do for God. But we can see here, even, even if we are sheep, that God, who is above all, came to be among us, came to teach us how to lead others. And just like in the Ezekiel passage, the prophets, we see a leader who serves in love, who protects, who guides, who binds up wounds. And the shepherd image is about love and compassion for another human being or another being, in the case of sheep, to the point of self-sacrifice. So what what more self-sacrifice do we have than Jesus on the cross taking our judgment on our behalf? Jesus was teaching here to the disciples in Matthew that there are consequences for our actions or inactions. If we aren't leading like shepherds, like Jesus would leave, lead, and Jesus was a shepherd, then we're doing it wrong. We're headed for separation from God. And it's interesting to me that this passage that's falling at the end of Jesus' ministry, because remember, this, this is only a couple of chapters away from the end for Jesus when he dies and rises again. So he's, he's trying to tell the disciples something, something he leaves them with. And he says, here's this end days picture. And he paints it kind of with a parable. And he says, the righteous folks don't even know that they've been righteous because they don't realize whom they have fed and cared for and visited and clothed and welcomed. They didn't realize that was Jesus. But he says, just as you did to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. So this king may have absolute power, but unlike our poor examples of authoritarianism and kings and dictatorships here on earth. Jesus is a king who serves. Leadership on earth should be like this. The minute it becomes more about the person rather than those they're serving, we're headed for trouble, Jesus says. Now, does all this serving and loving save us? No, of course not, not alone. Christ came to offer us abundant grace, even to those of us who have been very goat-like. Thank heavens for that. <laughs> we can't earn this kind of mercy. But these good works, this loving of others sacrificially, this is how followers of Jesus are recognized. This is how the shepherd king's kingdom plays out in this world. The same God who shepherded Israel shepherds us as followers of God's Son. And we help to shepherd this world by following God's lead in Jesus. We provide hope for the hopeless, solidarity with the marginalized, care for the sick, food and clothing for those in need. I can't think of a better king to follow than a shepherd king one who will lead us ultimately to green pastures for rest, who feeds our souls and binds our wounds and protects us fiercely 
from those who would lead us astray. So, maybe the reign of Christ, with Christ as king, is something I can get behind after all. I'll never probably get over my historical hang-ups about monarchies, but Christ's kingdom is one that's led by a holy shepherd, a servant leader, guided by ethical imperatives to love everyone equally, bringing about the best in people as we follow Christ's guidance. And this heavenly monarchy may not be one that we see play out in politics or nation states directly, but it's one we should see played out by Christ followers. And some Christ followers are leading us locally, nationally, internationally. My prayer for all of us is that we continue to recognize that Christ's kingdom is our first allegiance. And I hope and I pray that those Christians in leadership would hold fast to that as well. If we're seeking to serve the underserved, to welcome the stranger, to provide for the needy, bring justice to the oppressed, then we are doing God's kingdom work in Christ Jesus. And that, my friends, is a kingdom that has my allegiance. Amen. If you would stand with me as you are able and let's sing crown him with many crowns found in your worship folder.
it has been wonderful to have you with us once again for Virtual Church today. We look forward to continuing to stay in touch in the weeks to come for worship and study and prayer. Now I leave you with this benediction. Go now and embrace the hope to which God has called us. Recognize Christ in friend and stranger. And as Christ has been gracious to you, so be gracious to those in need. And may God give you a place of rest on rich pasture. May Christ Jesus be the shepherd king who binds your wounds. And may the Holy Spirit give you wisdom and reveal to you the fullness of the one who fills all in all. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ our King.